Welcome back, folks. Listen, this is week four of Get Your Grill On. Listen, this is number four of a five-part series, right? This is in partnership with Walmart and myself to get you guys ready for the grilling season. And to be specific, we finna get you ready for that Memorial Day. Okay, so look, let's go over some of these ingredients right here. Now you guys can see I got dry ingredients. I got my barbecue sauce right here. Now I'm gonna start right here. Listen, I wanna show you guys, look, this is my favorite quick go-to Cheetos mac and cheese. Listen, you're talking about bold and cheesy, super easy to make. These are it right here. You guys are gonna like that. Now we're gonna come over here and look at these Tyson, you know, baby bag ribs. Look at how meaty they are. Actually, I already cut these. I'll open them up right now. When you talk about meat, you don't really have to do a whole lot of trim to them. These right here are gonna be fire, right? And guess what, folks? We're gonna do it my way. So listen, I'm gonna go ahead and address this part because you guys might be thinking, like some people think there is a challenge to uh, making ribs, but if you've been following me, it's just the way that I explain, it's the way that I see it. And I'm gonna show you guys in detail just how easy it is to make, right? We don't need to overthink it or nothing like that. Listen, so I'm gonna say it this way, challenge, be gone. Now to talk about why I choose, you know, Tyson baby back ribs. As you can see, listen, the quality is there, right? And to add this part to it, that there's no added hormones or steroids, listen, the flavor profile on that just makes it just over the top. And there's a, a secret ingredient, right? And that secret ingredient is, it's my infusion of the Kingsford charcoal. And listen, that's the original blend. It's that combination along with these ribs. And you know what I mean? And then we gonna pair it with this side right here. Mm, that's it. All right, so listen, after going over all of this, you know what it is? It's time to get down to the nitty gritty, right? So listen, you can look at these ribs right here. I haven't even put no knife to it or nothing like that. These right here are really ready to go, right? Not a whole lot of little pieces hanging off the edge. This is what I mean when I talk about quality. Now, only thing I will do is I'm going to peel this membrane off. And this is really a personal preference, right? So you want to take, listen, I got myself a little a knife right here. Let me show you how you do this. So let me tear a piece of, you know, of a uh, paper towel because we're going to use this for grip, right? Now, you see this right here? Man, there's so many things about people tell me, man, this is a little bit on the chewy side, you know, and stuff like that. Well, they tell me that until they come. It's really a 50-50 chance when you come and eat ribs that I do that I pull the membrane off, right? So all I do is I get under there to start it, right? Now, what I want to do is I want to grab a paper towel and I'm using this for grip, right? So I'm going to pull this just a little bit, just enough so I can get a good grip with the paper towel, right? So you see that right there? Now that I have it, you see the membrane going all the way down? But I got myself a little piece and I'm gonna put my hand here and look, we just pull this off. You see how easy that is? I don't know what I did right, cause listen, it never does right when I'm trying to film this. But this right here was done perfectly. Now, this will allow me to go ahead and season on the backside and we can get up in the backside of this meat. Okay, folks, so look, you can see both of these membranes have been removed, right? So now we're getting ready to go ahead and mix the ingredients. You can go to walmart.com to get the full recipe. So now I'm getting ready to take all of my dry, add them here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just getting ready to whisk all of this together, right? Now you see we got brown sugar. When you got brown sugar, you, you know, a lot of people think about being on the grill and that it'll burn, but we're using a low temperature, folks. I'm getting ready to teach you guys and get you guys to start thinking that I'm gonna be making these all the time and these are not hard to do. So this is what you end up with and that's how it looks, right? So I'm right here, I'm gonna use this. This is my shaker, right? This is from my burger rub, but I'm obviously I don't have that in here. I wanna take this off and the reason being, I wanna be able to sprinkle this on here and I'm gonna show you about having, you know, some good coverage on your ribs, right? So let me go ahead and put this in the inside. So you can see I filled it up, you know what I mean? So this is all gonna make sense to you once I do it. You just want to have some kind of way. You don't have to have a shaker, but it's, it's good to have one, right? So now what you see right here, I got yellow mustard. This is what we call a binder. A binder can be anything, even right here, because I'm going to be spraying the ribs. You know what I mean? This is just uh, an apple cider mix, and it's mixed with water, right? So it's one part, one part. Real simple. I could have sprayed that on there, but I'm going to do it the way that I normally do it. I just like using the, uh, I like to, you know, just paint the mustard on, right? So. I'll do like this and I'm gonna get it all over. Notice I'm doing the sides because we want to get we want to get rub everywhere. All 
All right, folks. Now, look, I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of these questions because some of y'all are going to ask me, like, hey, I never use mustard or nothing like that. And they're going to say, hey, I don't like mustard. Or some people say that they, you know, they're going to ask, like, can I taste the mustard? No, you cannot taste the mustard. You know what I mean? I don't ask you to put no whole lot on there. You can look and see how, about how much I put on here. Now, let me go ahead and do this part right here. Why I have it in here. Now, I just want to show you, folks. Watch how it covers. It's just a little hard to do when you have it and you just sprinkling it on, right? Look at that right there. That's why I like to put it always in the shaker. You can see how I just travel all the way down, right? Then it's a piece of the meat you don't want to forget. Now, obviously we got some right here, right? But we want to flip it like this and we want to get a little bit there, right? And then over here, remember we painted it also? And I use the word painted because we brushed. That's what we did. So just like, that's just like the natural, right? And then if you want to, you can give it a little pat now it's got a little salt in it, it's salt in it, so it's gonna put out a little moisture, still gonna make it nice and tacky, and we do the same thing from here. You know what I mean? I like to start this way and drag it down this way, right? So you guys, there is no right way or wrong way to do it. You do it how you want to, but I'm just gonna do it like this. And look at the coverage. No, it's not too much. This right here is just right. This is why everybody wanna have AB's ribs. Okay, so you see that right there? That's a work of art. Listen, you two are gonna be able to do it like this. I promise you this is getting ready to yield something like amazing. So we are gonna come on over here. I'm still have it vented. You know what I mean? I slowed down my process because we wanna, you know, have our temp. We wanna do them nice and low and slow, right? So I'm gonna run these a little bit on the higher side. They'll be running about 275, right? So as you guys see right here, I got a water trough. That's to keep the moisture inside of here. Then I got my coals. So just to give you the setup, all my coals are pushed over here on that side, right? Meaning, I don't want to put my ribs over there, right? I want to put them over here on the non-direct side over my, over my water pan right here. That way I can keep the moisture in here and I don't have to worry about burning, no drips, no flare-ups or nothing like that, right? So here's another key. Let's move this over here like this. I'm getting ready to put this on here like that. The way you put your ribs on the grill is the way they're gonna cook, right? So I like to take them and do something like push them in, like, in, like almost like an accordion. That's what I wanna see right there. Nice and straight, and they'll cook that way, right? So let's get a little separation in here because we want the heat to go all the way through, you know, to be able to travel. I can go a little further so I can pick these up and put these here, right? And move these over just a little bit. Notice how I'm pushing them like that, and then notice how they stay straight. Just quality meat, no trimming. This right here is right. All right, so let me take my gloves off. All right, I'm gonna close my hood. All right, I already have it vented. I'm gonna wait till my temperature, you know, comes back to temp. So once I'm about, you know, 275 and it's holding, then we set a timer. I'm going to probably go about an hour, then I'm going to take a look at them, right? And then we're going to see, does it need to be sprayed? And then I'm going to talk to you guys about spritz. That was the bottle that you saw that when I told you I had one part, one part, and that was it right there. The key is, listen, when you're using the, you know, a kettle grill, you don't want to keep looking, right? They got that saying, if you looking, you ain't cooking. So we don't want to let it out. We got it vented just right to hold this temp. Now we had an hour and 10 minutes in. Let's take a look at them. All right, so I see they nice and still, you know, look, they moist. I don't need to spray, which is the term is spritz, right? I don't need to put none of that on there. You man, this is fine. Now, I'll give you guys a pro tip. What I like to do is I like to rotate. Since this is the first half of the cook, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over, right? And then I'm gonna, you know, turn them over because we want everything to pull and work and be equal. Now, I'm going to go ahead and spray these just so you guys know, so you can get the full effect. Sometimes you open these up and they'll be a little bit on the dry side. Like you can look right here and see it might be a little bit on the dry side, but you can still see it's moist, right? So I just take my spritz, my spray, right? And I just give it a little, that's it. You don't want to soak it. You don't want to run your, make none of your seat, your rub come off or nothing like that. But this right here is doing just fine. Now, we already vented properly. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let the temp build back, and I'm gonna set another timer for another hour and 10 minutes. 
All right, so now we finna take a look. Look, this is another hour and 10 minutes. Oh yeah. You see that right there? Look at the color. That's the seasoning, y'all. Once you guys put that rub on here, you guys gonna achieve that type of color too. Now, everybody wanna know like, hey, can you give me the time? Like I told you, first hour and 10, then the second hour and 10. Remember after the first, I rotated, turned everything so we can get even, you know, cook on it, right? I'm gonna tell you how I know. Let me see if I can do it this way. When I look at it like this. I like to see just a little bit more being before I move on to the next stage, right? So I have it this way, this time. Now I'm gonna put it over here. Like this. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna check this one also. Right? I like to see just a little bit more being. So I'm gonna let this go for about another 30 more minutes. You know what I mean? And then once I get like the, the shape that I'm looking for, that's when I'm gonna move on, you know, to the next phase, right? We close it. And then we, I'm gonna set a timer for about 30 more minutes and just check to see where I'm at. And then we're gonna move on. When I talk about the next phase, we're gonna do a little wrap. This is where we're gonna get it nice and tender and we're gonna put that glaze on it and all of that. Woo, we got like some nice color. Look at how that is right there. You see that? How it, it's a little bit more pliable. There we go. Now, I'm gonna take this, bring this over here, right? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show it to you, then I'm gonna flip this over like this, cause this is gonna be the way we put it down. Just give it a little moisture right here. Whew. Boy, I seasoned that just right. Let me go ahead and take this other one off. All right, so what I did was I got myself four sheets of aluminum, right? Aluminum foil. Now this part right here is real simple, right? You just wanna take some brown sugar and what I do is I just put it down like this right then I'm gonna take my knife and cut me some I don't know what to call them they're not quite teaspoons I mean tablespoons but I usually use the verbiage dollops right a butter you guys gonna love this right then remember we had that you know our spritz right here so look give it a little moisture right because what we're going to do is put it back on the grill and we're going to let it steam and this is what's going to tenderize it and get it super super soft right and that's already hot yeah i can tell you right off the back as soon as you put your ribs down like this it's going to start to melt the butter that's exactly what you want right so we take a little bit more of our spray I do the same thing for the backside. And then we just go ahead and start our wrap, right? And the reason I use two layers, cause you know, sometimes it'll, sometimes, you know what I mean? We start to handle these a little bit on the rough side. You know what I mean? We poke a hole. So having two, keep all of the, keep it mostly sealed. That way we can form that, you know, that steam in the inside. Remember, this is the top. So I'm gonna put it in just like this. And then we repeat for the second set. Once you get through with these, and I got it. It's like, might be a little bit of a process for you, but I promise you, when you serve these, everybody gonna wanna know, like, hey, when did you become a pit master? Now, we're gonna put them in like this, and I'm gonna put them down, meat side down, right? So that means the bones, the thin side, the, mem the membrane side, is facing up, right? Try not to poke no holes. Remember, we wanna generate that steam, right? So we put it over there. Now I'll put the top on and I'm gonna set a timer for probably about 45 minutes just to see where we at. I'm gonna be able to check it because I'm gonna use my meat probe, right? So I'll be able to stick that probe inside that meat. I'll be able to check to see how tender it is by the way it, 
you know, goes in the meat. This right here, foolproof. Okay, folks, listen, we right, we approaching one hour, right? I'm gonna tell you how I know. Remember I talked to you guys about the probe? Now I'm gonna take this probe right here, right? And I'm just gonna do it, well, let's do it this way. I'll turn it upside down like that, right? So when I stick this in here, that was a bone, so I hit it right, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's tender, right? So I'm gonna check this other one. I got it. I've been barbecuing so long, you guys are probably thinking like, man, how is he touching that hot foil like that? Listen, I got them chef fingers. Ah, uh, yeah. When I tell you it's right, now listen to me, folks. Follow these, you know, in, these instructions right here, and this will get you in the ball game. If you've ever been scared of it, I promise you, myself, Walmart, we didn't took the mystery out of this. You guys just replicate what we did. And when you put this out, everybody gonna ask you like, what school you done been to? You know what I mean? Cause these right here is fire. Now, before I pick this up, cause this right here is hot. I just want to show you, I put on my gloves on top of some cut resistant cotton gloves underneath, right? So it'll give me a little buffer. So I'm able to take them. Oh, uh, you can see they nice and soft. You know what I mean? Uh, do a little bit of drainage, grab them and bring them in just like that. Look at those right there. Now, let me get this other one over. Let me get it out and I'm gonna give you two options. Okay, so look, this is what I wanna explain and you guys talk to me and tell me if I'm right about this. Everybody don't like to have barbecue sauce on top of their ribs, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just do one with the barbecue sauce. So I'm gonna take this one and that's probably gonna be the culprit right there, right? So I'm gonna take this one and put it in. I just want it to set, right? So let me move the cutting board out the way. I'm gonna bring this over here. And since this is gonna be the one, I'm gonna put this, both of them back in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and just coat it. You know, this is my barbecue sauce. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll put it like a little blend for you guys to make one or just use your, you know, your favorite, right? But when you put this on here like this, you know what I mean? We're gonna put it back in there, not covered, not wrapped or nothing like that. We're gonna let that Kingsford do its work. You know what I mean? To continue to do its work. And I wanna tell you this, listen, just the flavor profile off of that. When you open the hood of however you making these, I can promise you this, you're gonna say, okay, I know what we are doing and I know it's gonna be fire because just from the aromatic, just from the charcoal briquettes, right and that's all we're gonna do all we need is about 10 to 15 minutes inside everything is set right on the top it'll firm it up just a little bit then i'm gonna go get my slicer hey and don't forget i told you it pairs very very good with cheetos mac and cheese super easy to make i promise you folks for just the quickness and the flavor how bold and everything is listen i'm not finna over talk it we finna just make them now, listen, we got the ribs in the inside, right? Remember, I went ahead and put the barbecue sauce on one rib and left the other one, you know, just the regular way. That's probably like how you guys are gonna make it, right? So now we talked about the pairing. The pairing is great, and I'm pairing it with these Cheetos mac and cheese. Super easy, quick to make. Instructions right here on the box, it tell you what you need is six cups of boiling water, right? So I already have six cups going. That's already boiling, right? So the next thing I wanna do is open up my box. And I want to add, you know, my pasta noodles in the inside. Take out my packet and get those going. Now, once you get them in the inside, you want to just go ahead and give them a stir. You don't want them to stick, right? So I'll leave them like that. Hurry up and put this top on. And now I'm going to set the timer for seven minutes. All right, my timer just went off. Seven minutes. Let me drain these, hit them in a the colander, and do not rinse. All right, you can see the steam nice and hot. So I said put it in the colander. Don't forget, you got to put your noodles back in your pot, right? So now what we want to do is we want to get four tablespoons of butter. Right, I'll go ahead and get this one. We add that. One third cup milk. And then we add our packet that came in the box. Look at the color, folks. We did say Cheetos, right? Right off the back, you can smell it. All right, now we take it and we let the heat from the noodles go ahead and help everything to marinate, you know, and melt together. Look at this right here. Oh, man. Look at how creamy that is. Now I'm getting ready to plate it. 
The ribs is ready to come out. So let's get it. Okay, folks, as you can see, both of them are done. Look, this just set, you don't see as much wetness on the top. This is the one where we didn't put no uh, barbecue sauce on it. And this is the one we did. Now I'm partial to the barbecue sauce. I know you guys can say what you want to say, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down just like this, right? So I'm gonna trace this bone. You know what I mean? Let's get down in here. Look at that. Nice, it's tender, cuts through just like that, right? So I'll lift this up right now so you guys can just see it. Look at that right there. Flavor throughout. Okay, folks, so look, after seeing that, you see the end result, right? So listen, I'm gonna give you a recap. And the recap is, look, the main thing is, you guys have just seen that it's not really a chore or a challenge to make ribs, great tasting ribs, you know what I mean? Just follow this recipe just like you see, and I promise you it'll turn out, you know, proper. Right, now let's mention some of the key ingredients that we used in this recipe, right? Now it all ties in to using the kettle grill, right? It starts with those kings for, you know, the original charcoal briquettes. That right there, just the flavor that it gives. And then don't forget, we use Tyson, you know, ribs, right? So no added hormones or steroids, you know what I mean? So that infusion of the, you know, the Kingsford, and then, you know, starting out with great Tyson ribs, that right there is fire. And then listen, so you add that, and then come on, folks, who don't like Cheetos mac and cheese? As you can see right there, look at that right there. That's not me doing nothing. That's the way it came out of the box. So if you're looking for a quick, you know, easy recipe that pairs great with this. And like I said, I'm gonna leave the veggie up to y'all. This is fire right here. So don't forget, this is a partnership with myself and Walmart. And guess what, folks? We getting you ready for Memorial Day. And don't forget, this is number four of five part series on how to get your grill on. And with that being said, you know how I leave all of mine. I really want to pick up this cutting board and then dance, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it like I normally do. Peace.